Thank you for listening to shulhanarcharav.com. Directives that are advised to be followed upon sending one's tefillin or mezuzahs for checking annually or whenever one does so periodically. The following lists have been allocated from the Paiskim Laachreinim and the recent Sefer titled Inside Stam by Harav Ruven Mendelowitz, who was an expert Sefer in Eretz Yisrael, and wrote a Sefer exactly on this issue. So first and foremost, when you plan on sending your tefillin or mezuzahs for checking, you want to make sure that the person you are sending them to do the job is a reliable and certified individual. Not all people who claim to check may be certified as a Sefer. And even more so, not all cipher are certified as Magim. So first and foremost, one is to make sure that the individual has certification for Aga and that the certification is not expired as it's required to be renewed regularly to make sure that the person knows the Halachas. It is likewise advisable that when you send your tefillin or mezuzah periodically for checking, such as annually, then you should send them to different Magim in different years, as by doing so, you increase the chances of discovering any issues that may be around with your stam. The following two matters relate to tefillin. When you send your tefillin to the Magia, some Magiyim are only checking for the actual parshias and to make sure that there's no mistakes in the actual parsha. And often they ignore checking the external parts of the tefillin to make sure that they also abide by the kashrus laws. In truth, if one has a psul, an invalidation in, in the batim or in the straps, then even if the parshas are kosher, he's putting on puzzled tefillin. And therefore one should verify and make sure with the magia that he also examined the straps and the batim to make sure that they are kosher. Such as to make sure that the straps are properly dyed with bl- black ink, that they have not shrunk below the minimum measurement of required width, and that the batim retain their square shape in all the areas required and have not been ruined due to sweat and the like, as is common in the areas of the sewing under the bias of the shalresh. In the event that the cipher tells a person the unfortunate news that the tefillin are puzzle or that the shalyad or shalresh is puzzle, then he should immediately right away put on a kosher pair of tefillin that day before sunset, and if he's putting on rashis, then a blessing is to be repeated. This applies even if only one of the tefillin were found to be invalid. We will now move on to a list to be followed when checking mezuzahs. When taking down the mezuzahs from the door, one should try to place each mezuzah in an individual bag and label them so you know from which door which room it came from. This is done in order to be able to replace them back in their rooms and not enter into questions of Hayradu Mekdusha Likadusha. Any parts of the mezuzah attachment that one plans to discard, such as an old case, or the tape or glue is to be placed in Geniza. When giving the mezuzahs to the cipher to check, one is to make sure to tell him, one is to verify with him, that the shin, which is on the outside of the mezuzah parchment, is not to be covered over by the parchment when he rolls it, and that, if he's putting it back in the cases, it should always remain in the center of the case, so when you put it up by your door, you are facing the area of the shin. It is also due to this reason that's written in the Paiskim that one should use a transparent casing or clear plastic or glass casing for his mezuzah parchment in order to be able to see the shin when he walks by. This, however, is with exception to certain rooms in which men or women are not dressed modestly in or conduct intimacy within it, in which case the case is not to be transparent at all. It is permitted for one to remain in the home while the mezuzahs are being checked and he's not required to place up any new mezuzahs. Likewise, you're allowed to remove all the mezuzahs from the home simultaneously, even from the front door, for them all to be checked together. It is best for the husband to put the mezuzahs back up on the door rather than the wife unless he's unable to do so or doing so will cause some delay, in which case there's no problem for the wife to put it up, obviously following all the halachic directives required. Regarding saying, saying a bracha upon replacing the mezuzah. So if plus putting the mezuzah up the next day, then a blessing is to be repeated. However, when you're putting up the mezuzah that same day, meaning you gave it him for checking and received it back that same day, then practically a bracha is not to be said unless one of the mezuzahs were found to be puzzle and were able to be fixed, in which case a blessing would be said on that mezuzah and you can then have that blessing cover all the other mezuzahs of the home. Thank you for listening to shulhanarcharav.com. Our free services of making Torah knowledge available to the public depends on donors like you. Please help us continue our work 
through making even a small contribution at shuhanarcharav.com under the daily halacha dedication section or in the subscription page. Also, check out our online courses and many Sepharim available for purchase that will both enhance your Torah knowledge and help support our work.